pupils. And he, again, you can see the genetic auburn red hair. And here we see the comparison between, that's a one-year-old normal human baby on the left-hand side and the 20-month-old Paracas elongated head on the right-hand side. And unfortunately, we, we had a mold made um, of the one on the right, and the, the Joe Taylor, who made the mold, unfortunately, he had to spray different adhesives and things on the, uh, on the skull. And so the, the original hair color, which was strawberry blonde, became darkened very quickly. But this, this child was born with strawberry blonde hair. And we know that because Senior Juan kept the mummy head bundled for two years in the museum. And then finally, we got a Peruvian archaeologist to unwrap it, and the hair color was strawberry blonde. Also, their god, who was called Khan, from which we get Contiki, is almost always portrayed as having red hair or blonde hair. And again, numerous mummies found in the area from the Paracas time period, and only the noble class show the reddish hair and in this case, blonde. And again, these are real skulls and uh, no alteration was done to them. And they never had a process of ceremonially uh, bleaching or dyeing the hair for any reason. These people had blonde and red hair. So as regards the genetics, once again, this is the standard story. You see that uh, on the western side of South America, B represents the mitochondrial or mother's DNA. And so basically everyone pre-Columbian in that area should be of mitochondrial maternal blood group, um, haplogroup B, if they descended from people who crossed over the Bering Land Bridge. But of the 20 skulls that we tested, only two had haplogroup B. And that, again, is something that archaeologists don't want to, uh, to, to discuss. We, um, after we did the DNA testing, we sent the results to the head archaeologist in Peru, who was the head of our, our study, and I got no response from him. So a month later, I went to visit him in his office without telling him I was going to show up because all of the other maternal DNA didn't correspond to Native American DNA. And so uh, we asked if we could do further DNA testing, and he simply said, no, because with these results that you got, obviously every sample was contaminated. But he knew fully well that the people who did, the two people from the U.S. that did the DNA testing, they had their DNA testing, and their DNA did not match any of the results we found. So what we found, for example, this, uh, again, is, is a baby about 20 months old. And its blood, uh, its haplogroup is U2E in one test and U2E1. And if we look back here, U2E originates actually in the area around the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. And then this one, which is one of the mummified heads with red hair, when its uh, DNA was tested, it turned out to be H. And the source area of H is the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. And then the one on the left, which was found buried with, that's the baby, the blonde haired, red haired baby wrapped up on the right hand side. So this is probably a relative since they were both found in the same tomb. And its blood group was H2A. And if you see the reddish area, you're looking at the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. And here, this is a, uh, the mitochondrial map. So basically all the results that we found, aside from the two that were Native American B, were haplogroups U, K, H, 
R and U. And the origin place of all of them, if you find the connector that takes them all back before they spread out, was the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea.